So welcome back to Scarlet Sprites, where real stuff is happening yet again. It's been almost a year since I talked about my CPS3 setup and the Darksoft Super BIOS, and here we are today getting ready to discuss a new multi for this hardware, and really a Cadillac of arcade hardware of sorts. Maybe that's a good segue for some quick background. Most of us know the CPS3 hardware isn't cheap. It's an expensive board, and if you go looking for an original third strike cart and disc setup, prepare for some real sticker shock, probably into four-figure territory. I picked up my board maybe six years ago with new generation, and I feel fortunate to have escaped today's prices, but even then, it was not a cheap board. But this is something that I really wanted in my arcade collection because, on a personal note, Street Fighter 3 represents the last major arcade release that I was excited for. It's the final game I recall waiting and looking for when wandering into an arcade in the late 90s. I vividly remember even where in the room it was and just how excited I was to play it for the first time when it finally was released. Although I didn't know it in that moment, the game would really mark the end of the arcade era for me. It was the last true blockbuster of its kind, at least to me, and so the CPS3 holds a special place in arcade gaming and is something I knew I needed to have in my collection. Flash forward almost a quarter century and we have options to run all six games on the CPS3 hardware without the need for the original discs or carts thanks to Darksoft's Super BIOS cart. While this is a solid solution that will get you playing Red Earth, the JoJo's, or a Street Fighter 3 entry, there is a major downside. If you decide you want to switch games, you're going to have to wait 45 minutes until the new game is written to memory. Well, this is obviously a bummer, and to be frank with you, I've never played Red Earth on original hardware because I just can't even be bothered to do that. So cover your ears, I've only ever played it on my RetroPie. And with that, enter Darksoft's CPS3 Ultra Sims, the aforementioned Cadillac CPS3 solution that also comes with a Cadillac price, but more on that later. Since the bottleneck for the previous multi-solution was the slow writing to memory, Darksoft engineered the Ultra Sims to be capable of holding all the CPS3 games at one time, but making only one available to the board by use of dip switches to control what memory banks were being accessed. So this is the kit, and it's a pretty nice box with custom foam to safely secure the components inside. The contents are so premium that I feel like this should probably be a briefcase with handcuffs. Okay, so you have your programmer adapters here at the bottom, one for single and one for dual flash sims. You have four single flash sims. And then on the right, two dual flash sims. You've got a daisy chain connector. And finally, your dip switch for selecting games. Okay, so installation is pretty straightforward for this, with a caveat. The first thing I have to do is, of course, open up my CPS3 case and get access to my board. The memory sims remove fairly easily. There are connectors on the back, so you'd simply just need to apply a little bit of pressure to release them. They'll typically lean forward and you can then take them right out. Don't force or try to pry these, they should come out easily. If they don't, something is wrong and you need to check to ensure that you've released both sides of the sim. Alright, here's where I'm going to pause for a moment and tell you that the Ultra Sims have to have the games written to them. That's what these adapters in the kit are for. They are used with the ProMan TL86 Plus programmer. One of the adapters here is for the single flash sims and the other is for the dual flash sims. The programmer is about $100 and you'll of course need to understand how to use it. Now I don't have said programmer, but this review kit had the memory sims already programmed so that I can easily drop them into my board. $100 is pretty steep for something you may only use for this single purpose. My suggestion would be to find a fellow arcade enthusiast on the Arcade Projects forums who is willing to do the programming for you for a small fee. And I think that's likely the best option for most people considering you'd otherwise spend $100 on something you'd never use again, and then you'd also have to spend time learning how to use it. Remember, 
Most online merchants want no part of selling these pre-populated with code that they don't legally own. And I'm sure Darksoft doesn't want the attention or his name attached to any sales that would be considered piracy. So that's why these are shipping blank to you. So with that disclaimer given, I'm going to take the Ultra Sims and just pop them into their corresponding slots. These have already been numbered, and so I'm just matching that number up with what is listed on the actual board. Similar to how we took the other Sims out, you just kind of lean these at a 45 degree angle to get them started, and then gently stand them up and they'll lock into place. Once all of these are in place, I'm going to take that daisy chain connector and link up all the Sims. Now these only plug in one way, so take your time and be careful, especially if the kit isn't yours and you don't want to wind up paying for it. The directions, which I'll link in the description, say to start with Sims 1 and 2 and to then work your way over to the other four. So that's exactly what I did. Now I had an easier time getting the first two on than I did Sims 4 and 5, but nothing terrible here. I was just being extra careful as to not break or damage anything. Finally, I took the end of the cable and plugged in the dip switch selector. So now that I'm all hooked up here, I have to decide which games I'm going to play. You all know there are only six official games for CPS3, but the Ultra Sims hold eight titles. The two additional games are hacks of Third Strike, which you see called out here. What interests me most though, is finally getting to play Red Earth on real hardware. And so that's what I'm going to roll with for my inaugural journey with the CPS3 Ultra Sim kit. Looks like Red Earth jumper settings are off, on, on. For convenience purposes, I'm plugging this into my Sega Astro City. Unlike Retro Ralph's, mine actually works, so it's a good choice for videos. I power on the cabinet and here it is, Red Earth running on my CPS3 for the very first time. So the very first game that I decided to try has an odd skip to it. Now, what are the chances of that? A little research shows that this is a known issue with Red Earth on this setup and Darksoft is working on a fix for it. Apparently the game still looks for the CD and causes the game to periodically skip. Not something you want on your fighting game. The current workaround is to plug the original CD drive or SCSI to SD back into the board. Okay, so that's not the greatest start to this, but it was just bad luck that I happened to pick the one game on here that runs oddly. So to demonstrate the true advantage and power of the CPS3 Ultra Sims, I'll try to show you an uncut segment here of powering off, switching the dips to another title. How about Fourth Strike, a hack of Third Strike? I haven't played that yet either. So all dips are off for that one. Back over here and turn power back on. Yeah, boom, instant switch to fourth strike, awesome. No 45 minute wait times to rewrite the memory. Why don't we go one more time here and check out some JoJo. So that's off, off, on. Yeah, this is pretty fantastic. Instant switching of games on Capcom's last piece of arcade hardware. And this is it. This is the ultimate CPS3 multi-solution. Okay, so from a functionality standpoint, this is definitely the way to go. I don't think anyone is going to argue that. I mean, who the hell wants to wait 45 minutes to switch games if they don't have to? But let's just pause for a second because I've been calling this the Cadillac solution and Cadillacs aren't exactly cheap. This is one of those times you are definitely going to pay for the premium experience. Are you ready? Hold on to something here. This kit is $460 plus whatever shipping is. So probably almost 500 bucks. And you'll still need an Ultra Bio solution, whether that's a repro cart or a converted factory cart. I think my original Super BIOS repro cart was $150 and I did need to buy a few repro sims to max out the memory on my board, which I conservatively think was another $150. So 
$300 and I have the quote, poor man's original solution. All games, but with the 45 minute switching times. With the Ultra Sims, you're probably looking at twice that if you need everything. And don't forget, you need to get them programmed too. So this is tough. It really comes down to how often you switch games as to whether this is worth it for you. I have to think a lot of you out there are setting this to third strike and just never looking back. For me, I'm a bit weird and I set it and forget it to second impact. I don't know that I have it in me personally to drop $500 for instant switching of games that I'll maybe only play once or twice a year at most. I just love Second Impact and that's where I feel at home and that's what I play almost exclusively on CPS3. Now I will say, keep in mind if you grab the Ultra Sim set as an upgrade to your Super Bio setup, you could potentially recover some, some of your money by selling off your original memory Sims if you wanted to. So ultimately I think I would say this, if you already have the Super BIOS and are satisfied and you're not switching games too much, this is probably a tough pill to swallow unless the CPS3 is hands down your favorite arcade system. However, if you just picked up a CPS3 board and you need to max out your board's memory anyways and are buying more than a few repro sims to get the Super BIOS running, well hell, I'd say just go for it and get this kit. I think that's really the ideal market for it. People who have just picked up a CPS3 board and need a multi-solution and have no investment in anything else. So with that, I wanna thank Darksoft for providing this kit for me to take a look at and share with you. It's a truly premium device and I'm always grateful for new hardware that improves the retro arcade experience. Now it's a pricey one, but it does deliver on the goal it set out to accomplish. You just need to tidy up that red earth code a little bit, but aside from that, this is truly an elite kit and the option most of us current Super BIOS users wish that we had. So thanks so much for watching today, everyone. I will link the install guide in the description below as well as links to buy the kit if you're ready to jump in. Thanks so much for watching today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you all next time. Later, guys.